Well, hey guys, Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango W3CT, your good old friend Jack, out here want, ought to, well, where am I at? I'm actually on the Jack porch. So, what I wanted to talk to you today about is um, a couple things. First, we're going to be examining a product that I told you to buy that I'm going to give you a fair warning, and I'm sure the thumbnail gave it away with the big warning sign on there. And I'm going to show you why that I'm warning you against that product. But I want you to buy that product because I think the product is awesome. Just be a little smarter, and I'm going to show you guys a smarter way to install your wire antennas. Let's just go there. Okay, and I also want to give you guys a little backstory, a little update on, um, you know, or, or know how you did on field day. Okay, let's talk about it right after this. Yeah, guys, so Field Day 2025 is in the books, and uh, it's gone. Uh, you know, we had a remarkable time. Our club, the Wacom Club, the WA3COM, if you look us up online, it's WA3COM.com. We had a really, really good time. Uh, the guys were great. You know, we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, uh, putting the antennas up. Um, here's, I'm just going to give you a short clip. I didn't do a... A field day video um, you know I didn't want to get the videos involved too much with our enjoyment of field day if that makes sense not that I didn't want to bring you guys along it's just I just want to separate those two and just I just wanted to hang out with the with the you know the ham radio club and just uh, do our thing so that's what we did but yeah we had a great time here's a little video clip right here of us putting our hex beam up and uh, getting that up in the air and it worked perfectly uh, it's a buddy hex the club bought it last year sometime last year the club bought it this is the th technically the third time we had it deployed because we used it for a qrp day that we have at, a, at one of our hams houses and bill i hope you have it again if you're watching this video because that's an awesome time uh, we pull up for qrp day and we use it winter fill day and then now we use it for summer fill day but um yeah, I had a goal of 100 CW contacts over the course of the 24-hour period that we operated, and I ended up with 125 CW contacts. So I, I met my goal, and I think that's what it is. If you're going out there to work field day, have a personal goal for yourself. You know, you're going to push each other a little bit to do better, and I felt bad because I didn't get the 10-meter band, and by the time I got on 10 meters uh, late Sunday, there was it was dead there was nobody on so i felt bad about that but i felt good that i stayed up uh, and worked 80 meters at 1 30 a.m so uh, that was an awesome time and there was a ton of action on 80 meters and nothing on 160 meters uh, when i was up so but i i eventually went to bed at 1 30 a.m and i got up at six uh the next morning uh you know changed my shirt because we all we stayed at the park so and i slept in the car a couple of the other guys slept in their cars a couple guys brought tents one guy mike if you ever see these videos man you're a trooper uh this guy stays up the whole time and he operates uh usually ft8 all night long so um and it makes a ton of contacts for the club so good for him and and we appreciate having mike run the uh the field day for us there he's a, a great guy great poda guy very active in poda uh, very established and a lot of certificates. So with that said, uh, I'm not going to name everybody there. Uh, Tom, you've seen, uh, I bring Tom up on my videos all the time, N3WS. Uh, Tom works with the County of Washington, had an emergency truck out there with generators uh, and uh, made sure we always had generator power running. So, you know, it, it, great asset. Everybody's an asset to fill day. So, you know, and and even the guys coming out, we have a lot of guys that come out that will help you set up and then maybe they'll go home or something. They'll come back the next day and help you tear down. That's awesome, too. That's not a problem. You know, you're participating. All right, but that's about it. I hope you had a great field day. I mean, it's a fun day every year. You know, I see some guys out there and operate by themselves. Uh, I, I worked a lot of guys operating from their houses because you can tell with, uh, with their qualifiers, right? And... Uh, yeah, so it's just awesome, you know. And some clubs out there working seven, eight, nine stations. Um, that's a pretty big field day, you know, pretty big operation. I don't know how they kept all the antennas separated far enough from each other so they didn't bleed all over top of each other, but that's a big operation. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get on really with today's video. Uh, I'm done talking to you here. And I know you're like, Jack, it's boring, man. Get up and do something. So I do have to do something, and I'll show you, because before I left for film day, <laughs> let's move this uh, camera around here and uh, turn, the, turn the monitor back on, Jack, so you can see yourself. Why? Do you, do you want to see yourself? Do you have that complex where you got to see yourself? Anyway, so, yeah. Before I left for Phil Day, well, let's back it up. Friday, we went out Friday to set up and a big storm was coming in. We're like, we're not going to set anything up because the big storm's coming in. It would be ridiculous to try to do so. So everybody pretty much, except a couple of the guys stayed there with the county truck like Tom. Uh, I don't know if Mike stayed Friday night or not. I'm not sure. But I think pretty much everybody else, I went home. So we decided we'll come back out Saturday to set up. Phil Day doesn't start until 2 p.m. anyway. We had plenty of time to do what we need to do. So, but before I left Saturday morning after a big storm come through, I was like, wow, remember that, the, the video you watched with my 203 foot random wire. Now, I introduced you to something on that 203 foot random wire and I introduced you to this before and I told Tom, thanks for telling me to buy it because this stuff is super strong, too strong. It's this stuff right here. Uh, mass strength. Mass strength rope, synthetic guy rope and accessories. And remember, I bought that from DX Engineering, and it's super, super strong, okay? It's super strong to the point where, you know what? It doesn't give. So with that said, you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> what did Jack do? Well, what Jack did, actually, was kind of a blooper on my part. I, it was more me. Um not doing things the proper way which we know as hams we hang wires and my wire was hung and it, it, it's hung up there since last march march 2024 when i put the antenna up and it's been fine uh, it's been absolutely fine first of all let's look at this wire this is the 203 foot wire that you've seen on my one of my prior videos that i hung that was fine it was absolutely fine right it was up in a tree but trees tend to move Okay, that's just the nature of a tree. When the wind blows, look at this one right now, right? There's only a little breeze and it's moving, okay? Trees tend to blow. So, my wire being up in that tree over there, okay, on with, and it was on paracord before, but I shot up the new rope, okay, that new stuff I just showed you, and it's really, really strong. Well, last week or so I was out, there was a little bow well, there's a big bow now, and I'll show you why. There was a little bow in my line there, and I was like, well, huh, I need to tighten that up. And uh, I tightened it up. I made it as tight as I can get it down there, and I tied it. You know where I'm going with this, right? I tied it off to a stationary post that's in the ground. Tight. I mean tight. Like, there's, it was, I didn't leave any slack in it. My first problem, Okay. So when I came out Saturday morning, I went to leave the house. This is what I had. This is what this is why it's slacking now. Let's get up here and have a look. Can you see a problem with that? See it leaning? Here's where it here's where it bent right here. I don't know why that top out oh, that top. Here's where it bent right there. Okay. So I believe that's right where the mast slides into the other mast. I think that's where it's at. Now I do have extra mass in the house. Now, can I change this out myself? No, I can't. Because every time I try to move that, this base will kick out. So I need my wife here. You know, she needs to do the old foot thing, you know, and make sure it doesn't kick out for me so I can get it back down and so I can get put a new mast in there and straighten that back out. So, but yeah, that was, uh, didn't make me happy. But it was totally my fault because I put, I put that new rope down there on it, you know? to make it more secure. I had paracord on before. What does paracord do? It stretches. But what does stretching do? It helps actually with the antenna because if it does get too much wind, it will have a little bit of play and it will be able to move back and forth and, and stretch. And you can always tighten it up later. So I went to the hardware store today after talking to the guys. Another good thing about being in a club and you guys like, maybe you don't like your club, your local club, you know, I mean, Let's face it, clubs are any club. I used to be a motorcycle 
uh, organizations, not clubs. I was in motorcycle uh, hog chapters. And it's different people getting together. You can't like everybody. And everybody's not going to like you, okay? But you know what it is when you get to a collaboration of people, especially ham radio, and you're sitting around a table and you're having a Coca-Cola, uh, you're eating a sandwich, you're talking about ham radio. And you're like, hey, this is what happened to me. You know, and they're like, oh, wait, okay. So this happened to you. Um, well, this is what you can do. <laughs> so one guy said, well, did you tie that rope off to a stationary object? And I said, I'm just making sure my mic's still picking up here. Um, yeah, okay. And I said, yeah, I did tie it off to a stationary object. He goes, well, there's your first problem. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you, you, you left no way for that to have play. And he said, you're supposed to tie it off to a brick. Hey, there's a good tip right there. So you tie it off to a brick. I told my wife, and she said, why? I said, because the brick can move, right? If it needs to pull it up and down a little bit, it can move. Or I went to the hardware store today, and guess what I bought? Ta-da! Some springs with some eyelets, okay? So I'm going to put that inside the rope. So that way, as the rope moves, as the tree moves, the spring will give, and hopefully it won't pull the new pipe over. So that's my thought. So let's talk about what happened to the 203 feet of wire that was up in that tree that I now have to get a throw cord back up in there, which that's my next step here. I'm not going to take you guys through that, but that's my next part of my process is I want to get that wire back up. I had it going up there, and remember it was coming across here, and I'll see if I can still find that video on my computer. I'll put a clip in right here. It was coming across here, coming down here, coming down here along the woods, and it went right to that stake right there, okay? Again, again, I now have an extra spring, so I could put a spring on here like this, and I could spring it. Just to give it some play. But what happened was, you guys remember I had 200 feet of speaker wire, right? I had 200 feet of speaker wire and I spliced a four foot section in. It's on the video. Right at that splice, and I said, I'm not going to use heat shrink because it's only temporary and I'm not, you know. Well, I twisted it and I taped it. The wind, as the tree was moving with no give, pulled that splice apart. So that whole entire wire came down. Yeah, I looked out my window this morning, I'm like, where's that other wire? I can't see the other new wire. So I put my shoes on, came out, it was laying in the yard. So I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys, a little bit of warning um, on, the, uh, on that rope. Um, you know, hanging wires. Ham radio, if a ham radio is not always a learning experience, guys, I, I don't know what it is. You know, you should always be thinking, always be making things better, always be wondering what can you do next, especially with antennas. If you have trees like I'm using, even with mast, I guess mast will blow around. But these trees, man, if the wind catches these branches, and these things, obviously, they're as high as I can get them, right? So they're up there, and then big branches blow, and that wire pulled, and that's just, that's just all she wrote, so... But, uh, but yeah, I'm always learning. So, again, I'm going to put these springs in. And you guys might be saying, Jack, that's not a big enough spring. Well, it's better than nothing at this point. So I'm experimenting. I don't know. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you uh, enjoy the videos. Thanks to all the subscribers out there. If you're not subscribed, why not? Smash that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. And uh, I never know when we record next. I just hope it's interesting to you or helpful anyway. Uh, as I told him at the club, we were talking about YouTube videos. I said... You know, I'm, I stress very highly. I don't know everything about um, antennas and stuff, but I tell you what, I've learned a lot uh, by reading books and, and experimenting and trying, right? And never let anybody, somebody else's video said that. I can't remember who it was. Never let anybody tell you that won't work. Do it and see if it will. What, what it's going to hurt to try it? Nothing, right? It's perfectly fine to try it. I'd rather try than fail then not try at all and always be stuck in my head so but thanks for watching this video again smash that subscribe button give the video a big thumbs up i would appreciate that this is whiskey three charlie tango w3ct your good old friend jack this is my ham radio journey guys again i hope you had a great time at field day 
um, or even operating a home, I hope that uh, at some point we contacted you from the club stations. And uh, I'm sure, you know, scores, our club goes for high scores, and I like high scores in contests, but I'm more of a person that just likes to do the contest. I have more fun doing that. All right, 73s, guys. Hope to catch you on the airways. Talk to you next time. Bye for now.